Alright, so in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to create a door, a locked door that will open and close to allow you to get in and out of this shop. Because it's locked, we're also going to create a treasure chest that contains a key that will allow you to unlock the door so that you can go in and out. We're going to begin by going up to the database. We're going to open that up and head over to the items. Now once you're on the items, we're going to hit change maximum down here at the bottom. We're going to increase that to 17 and that'll add a blank item for us to play with. We're going to name it door key. And we're going to double click on this uh, graphics window for the icon. I'm going to come down here and just pick any one of these key icons. Hit OK. I'm not going to worry about the description. We are going to change the item type to key item, the consumption to no, the occasion to never, and the scope to none. Just because the only reason we have this key is to unlock the door. Once we created that, we're going to hit apply to save the changes and OK. Now we're going to head over to the event layer. We're going to right click where we want our chest, go down to quick event creation, and over to treasure chest. Go ahead and click on that. We're going to change the graphics so that it looks something looks like something that would be outside of an armor shop, weapon shop. We're going to use that crate there. That looks pretty fitting. We're going to select item and we're going to use the drop down box to select the door key that we just made and hit OK. So now we have a treasure chest that contains that key that we just made. We're going to come over we need to add a door so that that key goes to something. Go ahead and right click where we're going to make our door. We're going to go down to quick event creation and head over to door. That door graphic is just fine. We're not going to worry about the destination because we're actually going to be deleting the transfer part of the event. So go ahead and click OK. Now we have a door here but it's not locked and it transfers the player. We're going to right click on that and go to edit event. Now, like I said, we don't want it to transfer the player, so we're going to click on that and hit the delete key. We're going to the sound effect move, we're going to click on that and delete that. And the set move route player, we're going to delete that as well. So what we're left with is play sound effect open and set move route this event, and then a bunch of turns, which will animate this door to open up. This is exactly what we want. We're going to come up here to copy event page, click on that, and we're going to paste it three times. One, two, three. And that'll give us four tabs that are exactly the same for this door. We're going to start with tab one. Under conditions, we're not going to have anything clicked because this is the default door. Now this one, we're going to come down and change it to action or trigger for action button. Now we don't want the door to be to open right now because it's locked. So we're going to delete this move route. We're going to right click on that sound effect and go down to edit. Because we don't want it to play the open sound effect, we want it to play a sound effect kind of like a knock, I guess, because it's locked. So we'll hit OK. Then we're going to right click below that and go to insert under tab 1 go down to message and show text we're just gonna type in locked to let the player know that that's locked with an exclamation mark there And we're gonna do dim background and show it in the middle go ahead and click OK and that's all we're gonna do for tab 1 so the default when the player walks up to it it'll say locked let's head over to tab 2 Tab 2, we're going to mark the condition as an item. Use the drop down box to go down to the door key. So this tab will become active once the player has the door key. We're going to leave the graphic as it is, and we're going to come down to trigger, and we're going to change that back up to action button, because we want the player to turn the key once they get it. We still don't want the door to open, so we're going to delete that move route, and we don't want it to play the open sound effect. Instead, let's right click on that and go to edit. We're going to scroll up here until we see 
key. We want it to sound kind of like they're jiggling a key around in there. So hit OK. Now we're going to right click. We're going to insert. We need to tell the player that it's unlocked. So go ahead, tab 1, message, show text. This time it's going to say unlocked with two exclamation marks because they deserve it. They unlock the door. And we're going to do dim and middle for that as well. And hit OK. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to take that key away from the player. So go ahead and right click below that, go to insert. I'm going to come over here, tab 1 to party, to change items. Click on that. We're going to use this top drop down to go back down to the key that we made, door key. The operation won't be increased, we are taking it away. So it's decrease 1. They only have 1. So we're going to take that away from them. Then the last thing we're going to do here is we're going to right click, go to insert, still on tab 1, down to game progression, and control self switch. Click on that. We're going to turn self switch A on. Go ahead and click OK. And that's all we're going to do there. Let's head over to tab 3. In tab 3, the conditions will be self switch A is on which we turned on at the end of tab 2. Now for tab 3, we're going to leave it player touch because the door is now unlocked, the player no longer has the key, they can walk in freely. So we are going to leave all of this the same, it's perfect. It plays the open sound effect, it moves the event, it turns it, animates it so that it looks like it opens. All we got to do here is right click below that, and go to insert, tab 1 still, down to game progression, control self switch. We're going to use the drop down to pick B. We're going to turn B on and click OK. On to tab 4, conditions, if you guessed self switch, B is on, you were correct. This time, however, because the door has already animated that it was open, we need to change this graphic. So let's double click there. And we're going to count down three squares. One, two, three. So that it's this empty square right there. We're going to hit OK. We're going to come down. We're going to actually change the priority to be below character because we want the character to be able to walk on top of it. And we're going to change the trigger down to parallel process because we want all these event commands to run automatically. So we're going to change this sound effect. We're going to right click there and go to edit. We're going to scroll up here until we find close. Which is here somewhere. Close 1. We're going to hit OK. Then we're going to click on, we're going to right click on this move route as well. We don't want it to animate opening, we want it to animate closing. So we're going to edit that. You can see how it turns left, turns right, and then turns up. Over in this middle column you'll notice that those commands move down the column. Turn left, turn right, turn up. What we're going to do is reverse that so that it will turn right, turn left, and turn down. First we need to delete these three turn commands. Then we're going to click back up on the top and we're going to start at turn right. Click on the next wait three frames, turn left, and click on through, on, and turn down. Now that will animate the door closing. However, once the door is closed, you don't want the player to be able to walk through it. So go ahead and click on through, on, and hit the delete key. Head over to the third column and down to through off. And that'll make it so that the door can now be ran into by the player. Go ahead and click OK. We need to turn off. Go ahead and right click down here and insert tab 1 down to game progression. Control self switch. Once the door animates being closed, we're going to use this drop down box to turn off self switch B. And that'll take us back to tab 3. Go ahead and click OK. Now the last thing we need to do here, up at the very top, 
you're going to want to right click on play sound effect and go to insert. We're going to go to tab 2 this time over to timing and to wait. And we're going to we're going to have it wait 90 frames before it continues running the rest of those event commands. So go ahead and click OK. And that'll wait 90 frames before all of this starts happening. What that'll do is just allow the player time to walk through the door before the door closes automatically. If you find that 90 frames is too long or too short, go ahead and adjust this to be more frames if you want to make the delay longer for the door to stay open longer or adjust it down if you want it to close faster. So we're going to hit apply and OK and that should be our locked door. Let's go ahead and hit the go button and see how it worked. So we come up. Even by pushing up we can't interact with the door. We have to hit the go button and it says locked. So we're going to head over here to this chest. We're going to hit the go button and we got the door key. As you can see it is now in our inventory not under items but under key items and we can't interact with that at all because the whole purpose of that key is simply to unlock this door. So we come down and again even though we have the key item just by running into the door nothing happens. However once you interact with it it is now unlocked. Now that it's unlocked you'll see that that key item is out of your inventory. You'll also notice that you can now go in the door freely. The door will close behind you after 90 frames, a second and a half. You can walk out. You no longer need that key because it's unlocked. You can also use the action button to interact with the door if you don't want to walk in. And that's how you make a door, a locked door that you can uh, walk in and out of. I hope uh, this video was helpful, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Maybe we'll see you next time.